Let's go and create an inventive looking homepage for your shop website built with WordPress and Elementor. We're going to do things a little bit different here, whereby our hero banner is actually going to be a mixture of images and a call to action, but mostly advertising your products. And also we're going to showcase your products on the page, but in a different way to how you may normally have done it before. So I've already gone and set up a few things like I've decided on my style of images and this is the person I'm going to have in my hero banner but it's not going to be a full whip and you'll understand when I build it. I've also devised my color palette and I've gone and got some product images. Now all of my images have been put through bulkresizephotos.com to make sure they are web people. And of course we go over to our elemental page and site settings. There's my global color palette. Ignore these colors because this is my website I use for test purposes. We're going to use Flexbox container here and the layout I'm going for is going to be a little bit different to maybe what I've built before and I hope Hope you understand it. We are going to have a container that's actually going to have five containers inside of there. I've got to drop one in that currently if we go to navigator is a container with two child containers. I'm going to duplicate so I'd get five now like that but this is not how it's going to look. Let's go to my parent container. I'm going to set the box width to be 1100. I'm going to say the height of this is a BH of 100 as well. By the way if you had a header which we're not building here you might have adjusted it to maybe be about 95 or 90 or whatever like that to make sure you account for that unless it's a sticky header with a transparent overlay or you know Z indexing overlap or something like that. I'm going to ensure that the parent container is set to be a row and then I'm going to say enable the wrap and then we get this layout so you can see one two three four five. I'm also going to say align all of my contents to start at the top which you can now see as well. Bear in mind though that this little bit down here with align content if you don't have wrap it's not there the minute you do that if you do not start to define well do you want things in the center at the start or the end your layout might start to look a bit funny but I've said put it all like that now I'm going to start to control the width and the height of them so my very first container I'm going to say that this is 33.3 oh sorry by the way one of the little thing Go back to your parent container and down here it says gap between elements do make sure that is set to zero now I go to my main container and I'm actually going to override and ensure that I have no margin and padding. In fact, can I be a bit cheeky here and just get rid of everything we got here and just make sure I do it on the first one first. Sometimes I jump and I go, no, let me show you one and then it will make sense. So this child container, I'm going to make it be 33.3. And the height of it is going to be a VH of 70. Now I'm going to duplicate that one, right? So now within that 1100, they are occupying the, the width. However, the minute I duplicate this, it's going to go on the next line. But now it is stretching, like it's going beyond the limits I've set. Don't worry about that. Let's just set the VH for that to be 30 and the width of this to now be 50. And now I duplicate like this. So what I now have is, and you can see it there at the bottom, I have my five containers inside a parent container and I have 33%, 33%, 33%, 50%, 50%. And you can basically see what I'm doing here. That was really, really quick and easy, okay, to do. It really was. It's... It, you might need to do a little bit of thinking, but it's not that difficult. Let's now go to this container over here. I will now drop in my image. We're going to go to the background and add in the image of that lady in the summer dress. Now in container number two, I'm going to drop in a headline, a subheader and a call to action. Might even be a text editor as well. So let's go and drop those in. Um, make sure you are going into the right child container zone. You might want to name, rename this. Let's just call this one C1. I'm going to duplicate that header. We'll drop in a text editor and we've got a button as well. Now, don't worry about the styling just yet. OK, I am going to come back to adapt on this. Now, over here into column number three, I'm going to drop in a image. I'm going to put it on full resolution and I'm going to pick a bag image like that. Now, again, please don't worry about the sizing or how anything looks or the positioning. Let's now go back over to 
column or container number two. Let's go and align that. So we're going to pop it in the center and align it like that. I'm then going to go to my advanced tab and give this a little bit of padding. Say 40 on the left and right. I'm actually going to get rid of the text editor. I've had a change of mind, okay? Change the wording and the styling, a bit of weighting, a bit of letter spacing, 1.5 REM over here. And I think that was 1.8. Let's just do the button as well. At the moment, on this white background, it doesn't look great. And this is where we're going to go back to the container. And now I'm going to give this one of my color palette colors. Now we're going to go over to container number three and I'm going to do similar thing here. What I'm going to do is I've added in a color but I'm going to actually give it a bit of a gradient. So I'm going to mix it with one of my other colors that I've got which is that one there. So it's kind of like a blend of it. And I'm just going to change the angle to be something like, and this is the beauty, right? This is the background. So all I've done is dropped in a transparent image and now I'm adjusting it to kind of be the kind of look I'm going for there. That, that looks okay. Click on the container and I'm just going to align everything to be in the center. Now the size of this image at the minute is coming up as full and this is a 500 by 500 but I really want to have quite a bit of space in here to be 300 on the max like that. So what you get is, um, oh, sorry, one more thing I do want to do. This container at the minute, we have a default 20 pixel layout. I'm going to increase that to be about 40 like that. So what you get is you get a person of interest in your hero banner. You get some headline statement, you get a word in the middle, and then you get a product. Now, this is not linking anywhere. It's just a product. Because the whole point about the hero banner is I'm just showcasing here's what you could get here. Now I'm going to copy that and paste it over here like this. So now I'm just replicating as I go along. Make sure this container is set to be in the middle like that. I'm now going to just go and change the image out. Again, I'm going to do very similar to what I've done above where I'm now going to put in a different color for the background. I've slightly changed that orange color and I've now realized that these images actually are a little bit bigger than they need to be. So I'm just going to make them be a tiny bit smaller. What we now have is our hero banner. And I don't know about you, but we've just built that with five containers, a bit of a layout shift, and we've just stylized it. And I think it works really well, but it's what we're going to do next, which I think is even better. If you're worried about how it looks on the mobile, when we flip to it, to be honest, all you'd have to do is go into each container and adjust it. So if you decide that's too big or too small, you could go and do that, just like these bottom ones here. If you feel like they're, the spacing's not right or you go, well, no, we, we want to maintain the 40 pixel gap that we've got in there, but I want to make it smaller. You could do um, and, and you could work through all of these one by one. But ideally, what you want to do is formulate your style and then start to replicate it. But you can easily do that. And don't forget, you can go to any one of these containers, go to advanced, go to responsive. And you might then say, do not show that particular one on the mobile so you can adapt it to work for you. I haven't used any responsive clamping for the font or the sizing of the images or anything like that. That is something I would recommend. You can go and watch some of my other videos for that, but let's just stick on using what we're doing to the, 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 the next section. Now, it's not uncommon if you are now going to advertise maybe some products, you know, like you're telling people, hey, look, this is what we got, is for you to go and drop in, say, the products widget, or you may even use a loop grid as well. The trouble is, though, regardless of what you use, your products sometimes can look a bit boring because you're going to get an image of the product like this and then you'll get a button or something like that. Of course, if you were using loop grid, you can stylize it, but you're always kind of slightly controlled by what is the featured image of the product. Um, it might be that you have different images in the gallery, but then again, the images could be so varied, it doesn't work for you. So what I want to propose is that you follow this similar layout, but without the colors. But what you do is you create like a, almost like a grid layout, but we're not using CSS grid. You create a layout where, whereby you now advertise either particular products or just the category. So people can go, oh, I want jeans. They click it and it takes them to the jean category. I want dresses. They click dresses and it takes them to that particular page. So very similar to what we did above. I'm going to go over and I'm going to click a layout where I'm going to say, just give me a con parent container with two ch children inside. Let's go for 1,100. I'm going to zero out all the margin and padding. Great. Now I go to the, I'm actually now going to delete the second child container. I'm going to go to the first one. I'm going to set this one to be 33.3. 
I'm also going to set the height of this to be a VH of 30, no, not 30, yeah, 33.3. So we get a square layout. Zero out all the margin and padding inside. And then I'm just going to hit duplicate. So I've got three going across. I'm going to go back to my container, make sure I've set the wrap, make sure I've set it to be flex star. And now when I duplicate, it will now just start wrapping because I'm basically going to have a grid of three by three. I'm going to take this image that we have over here. I'm going to plonk it into the middle here uh, and I'm then going to decide on my layout for this container will be obviously in the center. I'm going to set this to be a 200 and then I'm going to pick up this header over here, drop it in underneath because maybe I've already applied some styling and I want to replicate it or not. I'm then going to just modify this to say scarves and then this would link to my product category for scarves. So maybe I've got a shop page and I'm now going to use that to as a link over to the shop page because I've got a particular style or design for it. This is in the center. I'm going to go to my container, make sure this is zeroed out like that. And then what you want to do is you want to click on the entire container, go to additional options, set it to be a link. So if I was to now set this and I'm just going to go and pick in one of our pages, doesn't matter where I, I mean, look, it, nothing's going to happen if I click here, but if I click on here, it's going to take you to my fake homepage that we were building in another tutorial. So you can now lit, put a link on the container without messing around with any fancy CSS or anything like that. Let's now double check that looks okay in the mobile, which I know it will. And this is where you might again want to modify the height of this or how big it is. Because just because on the desktop, I've gone with a 33.3 on the mobile, I could actually increase it a little bit. I have a lot of flexibility. Um, I can even have two containers side by side. So this container at the minute is 100%. I could go with 50% like that, but then you just got to modify the size of your images as well inside, which you could easily do. Right, I'm just going to leave this back at 100. Now I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to swap out the images and then to mix it up a little bit and remove the images that we had over here in these two. And I'm now going to change them to say something completely different. I'm going to drop in a text editor. I'm going to make sure that my container's got uh, that gap back in of at least 20 pixels and I'm going to give this a little bit of padding just to squash things up a bit and just below I've dropped in a blank container because I now just want to show you the layout that we have here. We have a 100 VH, we have another 100 VH and we have like this different way of presenting where by now you'll have these links that are going to obviously take you to where you need to go but then you're breaking it up by not just being a three by three grid of nine products, which can be a bit overkill, because it will just feel like, oh, you just bleh. By dropping in a little bit of text as well, and you can have a call to action as well, but in a way your call to action actually is your products. It's very, very important though, that when you do create your products or categories like this, you try and standardize the size. All of these images, transparent background, can you see the, the border that we have going all the way around? They all sit within that. If you are wide, you do not go beyond that. If you are tall, you do not go beyond that. So that when you then present it on the page, it just looks nice, even though that is massive compared to that. And you'd never have shoes that big if your legs were that big or whatever. But it works, doesn't it? And what you have is this nice, simple layout. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow and try it out. See you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring.